This is Genatsa Tayer, a toast to Armenia with Jano Kabinjian. A comprehensive look at the Armenian culture only on the Ignotainment Media Network. Genatsa, Genatsa Tayer, Pai Luis in Spesek. Hey, it's great to have our show back last week. Uh, we had our producer Chris, who was out. He's, I tell you what, the guy is working every day. And uh, Chris, you were out uh, trying to find us some ads. I was advertising yeah, out on the road. I appreciate it very much. And uh, folks, if you get a chance uh, to listen to our show and uh, find find anyone that you know that uh, would like to advertise on our show. That would be big. Yeah. We're looking for sponsors. We're looking for some sponsors, some great Armenian-owned owned businesses or, you know, organizations. Info at armeniaproud.com. That's great. That's great. Jumping to the news, because i got to get this news out of the way real quick. we got a great guest who's on hold here, so we got to get right to it. Uh, my Armenian friends listening in Turkey, our Armenians in Turkey, make your vote count. This HDB HDP party is supporting 100% the backing of recognizing the Armenian genocide. And they want to open borders with Armenia as well. So this is very big for us. So if you're in Turkey and you're Armenian and you got friends that are Turkish too, vote for HDP party. All right? Let's get that out of the way right now. That's very important to us. Going to sports. Going to sports. Our Armenian chess players are on a mission. Our top players at the Kazan International Tournament are really kicking some butt. Robert Hovanesian and David Shahinyan, uh, well, they're on top right now. They've been winning their matches, and good luck to our guys at the Kazan Tournament, and that's being held in Russia. How about that? Nice. And uh, not on the bright side, I don't know how. I don't know how on this. Armenia from 77th spot in the World Cup rating or world ranking in FIFA. They didn't even play. They dropped the 84th. I, I, I don't understand that. Mm. But, but, again, it is FIFA, and who knows who could have paid who to drop another seven points on our standings there. Uh, maybe they are that bad, though. I don't know. On the entertainment side, my friends. In uh, Los Angeles, Peter Mazurlian. I hope I said that right, but I probably didn't. Uh, Horizon TV nominated for L.A. Press Club Honor. Documentary filmmaker Peter Mazurlian was nominated for featured documentary over 25 minutes. That's the parentheses on this one. Award by the L.A. Press Club for his historic Armenia, which first aired on Horizon TV. Armenian television in October 2014. The 40-minute film is up against uh, diverse nominees from KCET and Manduro Fox and uh, Hollywood Reporter. But you know what, guys? Good luck to Peter on this one. I hope he can uh, win, but even if he doesn't, him being nominated, that's a big plus in our uh, film guys out there in the West Coast that are trying to make it. Without Further ado, Chris, let's get to our guest. This week, we are fortunate and honored to have Jean-Marie Papelian, Executive Director of an organization called Armenia Tree Project. It's amazing, Chris, reading up on all the hard work this organization does just to keep Armenia green and to keep the forestry alive and well. Jean-Marie, welcome to our show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, Jean-Marie, uh, a big question here: uh, How do you guys? Uh, how do you guys uh, do this? I mean, how, what, uh, Armenia Project. How did this ever come about? Well, the way it started, Armenia Tree Project celebrated its 20th anniversary last year. It was founded in 1994 by Carolyn Mugar. Carolyn, uh, you may have heard of her. Uh, her family uh, are well known for their philanthropy. Uh, she was in Armenia during the dark days of the early 1990s when there was no heat, no water, no light. And one of the things that she saw which really moved her was um, people cutting down trees in city parks 
to heat their homes. Yeah. And she realized it was a much bigger pro- uh, problem than just uh, the trees being removed from the city parks, and she determined to do something about it, and that's how the Armenia Tree Project got started. Now, you're based out of Boston, Massachusetts? Watertown, actually, which is uh, the, uh, the central location for the Armenian community in New England. Okay, and do you have another uh, home base in Armenia as well? Yes, we do. We have an office in uh, Yerevan, Armenia's capital city, and we have uh, three nurseries in Armenia uh, where we also have staff. I got you. Your organization, how many people are committed to this painstaking work that you guys are doing right now? So we've got uh, nine employees in the United States and about 80 full-time employees in Armenia. Uh, There are quite a few seasonal workers who help out in Armenia during the planting seasons as well. Volunteer work as well? Volunteers, yes. We do have volunteers who help out, um, but for the most part, um, we we employ the locals in Armenia to assist us with this work. That's great. I guess the big question is, how important is growing trees in Armenia? What's what's going on with that? Well, it's very important, and uh, it's our mission to help reforest Armenia and preserve its environment, and we do that in a number of ways. Of course, we plant trees. Uh, we grow trees in the three nurseries, which uh, Armenia Tree Project operates in Armenia. We have an environmental education program, which has been improved approved by the Ministry of Education and is in many Armenian schools. It has a sister program here in the United States so that um, American school children can learn about helping Armenia's environment. Um, And we have uh, tree planting projects all over Armenia and Karabakh. We have uh, the community tree planting has planted in a thousand different sites in Armenia and Karabakh, and then we have some forestry sites as well. Now, uh, going to that, though, uh, you folks have planted, I read this on your site, four and a half million trees were planted since 1994. Wow. That's a huge yeah, number. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, that's a big number. That's a big number. That had to take a lot of work right there. Well, it's been a lot of work, and we're very dedicated to it. And of course, it's there's been some trial and error. You know, some of the sites where we planted in the early days didn't have a great survival rate, and we learned from that and uh, and have moved on. But uh, we're continuing to plant trees and continuing to expand. I mentioned that we have the three nurseries. Um, there's one in the village of Kadian, which is close to Yerevan, and we have a beautiful um, visitors and education center there, which was sponsored by the um, Ohanian family. And lots of local school children visited on field trips. In fact, recently I was in Armenia, and I happened to be there on a day when a class of seventh graders from a local school were there on a field trip. They had a great time. Um, so we have the nursery in Cutting. There's a nursery further north in a village called Margohovit. Um, that's sponsored by a local family who's from the Boston area, the Myrak family. Um, and the trees which are grown in the Myrak Nursery in Margohovit uh, support the forestry program. Um, and <coughs> then we have another nursery in Khachpar, uh, which also grows trees for the forestry program. And we're in the process of acquiring a new site uh, south of Yerevan for a new nursery. And you'll be hearing more about that in the future. Um, in Margohovi, which I mentioned a moment ago, in the north, where there's this beautiful nursery, we have a couple of other exciting things going on. Um, there is another educational center, um, it's called, uh, also sponsored by the Ohanian family, called the Ohanian Educational Center, and groups come there and they can actually um, spend the night um, doing all sorts of hands-on ed- education in addition to lectures, they can visit the Myrak Nursery, and they can see just outside the village the Huran Dink Memorial Forest, which the tree project has planted and continues to plant and expand. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot. Um, it, it's kind of a hike to get to. If you're a tourist in Armenia, it might take you a while to get there to visit, but it's well worth it. Well so, worth it. So guys like me and Chris can put on our hiking boots and... Uh Go through the woods and uh, get uh, just enjoy a weekend of nursery. Then, right? I would love to do that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's excellent. You better circle that, uh, Chris. <laughs> you and me. All over it. 
so the urgency, uh, is there a particular number per year, per a- annual year that you guys come out with uh, on the, the trees? The, uh, I mean, is there, is there a certain number that you guys like to get out there, planted? Well, at the moment, um, you know, it's varied over time. Uh, at the moment, what we tend to do is through the community tree planting project, about 60,000 trees a year, and through the reforestation program, about another 250,000 trees per year. Um, some of these uh, are both in the forestry program and in the community tree planting program are fruit trees. Um, diversity is important when you're um, establishing a, a forest. It can't just be all evergreen trees, for example. Uh, we do focus on trees that are native to Armenia. Um, in the community tree planting, we often include fruit trees because then local populations can take advantage of, of the fruit, but it's important in the forest as well. Um, we uh, Sometimes the animals will help themselves to the fruit. You know, that's interesting you say that because last week uh, we were talking uh, on our show and it was about the apricot having the the best season since 40 years. And what do you think is uh, the reason behind that? Oh, I don't know what uh, what's the reason behind having the best apricot season in 40 years, but the Armenian apricots are the best in the world, and we grow a lot of them. Uh, we grow apricots, local apples, and local pears. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, has there been any laws set by the government in, the matter, in this matter that... Uh, you know, uh, you folks doing your job, and uh, are they on a tight shift like the government to overlook uh, all the hard work that you folks are doing is uh, rewarded by no one cutting down these trees and so forth? Uh, are, 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 they, uh, are they working well with you guys on this? We do work well with them. Um, there, there are government restrictions on logging. Um, people don't always follow the regulations, and that's a challenge. Um, we're in no position to enforce those regulations, but we do work together with uh, the uh, government administrators. <coughs> uh, and we, in particular, work very well with local governments, because when we go into a community to do community tree planting, um, our success depends on a good relationship with the local community and often the local mayors or uh, regional governments. Now, uh, when when you do go into these local towns and so forth, uh, are there any towns that rely on uh, uh, lumber work and so forth where they frown upon, uh, hey, uh, we need these trees and so forth uh, for our survival, for our business as well? I can't think of a, of a locality where we've had that particular experience. Okay. All right, great. Then I'm glad the support of Armenia is uh, backing you guys up uh from the population to the government. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah. Uh, yeah not- I mean, so the challenge that we have sometimes is uh, it, you have to have the community support because while we do monitor the sites, um, we can't monitor every one of the 1,000 sites every day, and m- maybe livestock broke through the fence and started helping themselves by munching on some of our young trees sure. um, or something like that. Uh, we need the local community to work with us to alert us to whether there's a problem. And, you know, in some of the uh, smaller villages, the outlying villages, people rely on wood to heat their homes for cooking. Um, we know that. We recognize it. And um, the issue is how do you manage a forest st- sustainably so that you're not um, depleting the trees, the overall number of trees in Armenia over time? Absolutely. We read, that, well, I, I, I looked at your site, and it was frightening what you came up with on uh, if it goes the rate that uh, it's going now and you guys aren't involved and the Armenian people aren't involved in uh, preserving this, we can lose the forestry in Armenia in 50 years to make it barren desert land. That was amazing when I read that. It was frightening. Well, it is very scary to think about. Uh, But one of the reasons why we have this, educational program is the hope that we'll bring up the next generation to 
view the environment and preservation of forests in a different way than the older generation. And um, we have an environmental education curriculum which has been approved by the Ministry of Education. As I mentioned before, we're in many Armenian schools. Um, we have a handbook and a curriculum, um, and we work with them. We also do en environmental education programs for lots of other groups as well. Uh, we have visitors uh, who come to our educational centers. Um, we have um, outreach events for the community so that people can learn about the risks to the environment and how they can help to prevent it. That's beautiful. That So you guys never, you're never taking a day off on this. It's a year-round thing. Well, it absolutely is a year-round thing. And, uh, and, for example, with the environmental education that I was just talking about, the school year has ended, but now summer camp season is beginning. And so the environmental education staff... Uh, who works in Armenia is uh, is going into all sorts of summer camps to teach children about environmental education. The program's a little bit different when you're in camp as opposed to when you're in school. Maybe at camp you can have some more hands-on experience because you're outside, uh, but we want to continue um, to teach that. And it's broader than just planting trees, the environmental education program. Um, there's a, a program, a network that's sponsor, jointly sponsored by the European Union that we now belong to, which does not only tree preservation, environmental preservation, um, it, it talks about anti-smoking and um, water conservation. It's a really great program. The children are, um, are, are learning a lot, and they get very excited about it. Um, so that's one thing that we do. We're growing trees in the nursery year-round. We're monitoring the planting sites year-round. Um, and then there are a couple of planting seasons each year when we're out there planting trees. Well, that, that was my next question there is how do you monitor all these trees? That I, I know like uh, when you see these endangered species that are being let go back in the wild, uh, they're tagged and so forth. Uh, are you guys constantly monitoring the areas that you planted these trees? I, I'm sure that becomes difficult, too, after a while. Well, yes, we, we do have monitors who are part of the staff in Armenia, and they're out in the field every day. Um, it, it, they can't be at every one of the 1,000 sites every day, but over the course of a year, they do get to all the sites uh, to make sure that all is well and to see how things are going. And if there's a problem at a site, then they need to address with our forestry team, um, can we fix the problem? Um, should we be trying something else here? Is it the soil? Is it the type of tree? Is it livestock has gotten to the, to the trees? What is it that we can do? And um, so when you're offering these uh, uh, trips and so forth, uh, of these uh, school trips, uh, are, are these free for the kids and so forth? Or can they come to your nursery and uh, hang out and uh, there's no charge for this, or is there a charge? Right. Um, so, the, for example, a couple of weeks ago when I was in Armenia and there was a bus full of 7th uh, graders from the Avedisian school in the Malatya Sapansia district of Yerevan, and uh, the Armenia Tree Project provided the bus, and they came to the uh, Kari Nursery. They spent about half a day. They were inside the classroom getting a presentation about butterflies for a while, and then they came out and they had a tour of the nursery and asked lots of questions about the different types of trees and flowers. Um, they had a light lunch, and then they got back on the bus and went home. And, yes, that's, um, uh, that's something that, that we do because it's part of our environmental education. Um, there are school groups from the United States who visit Armenia and, uh, for example, St. Stephen's Armenian Elementary School here in Watertown, Massachusetts, has an annual trip for fifth graders to Armenia, and it's become a tradition that they will visit a site in the village of Procyon and plant trees with the Armenia Tree Project, and we work together with them to do it. When the children are here, they participate in our Building Bridges program, um, so they know about the work of the tree project before they get to Armenia. And it's a great connection because students from a local school in Armenia join them at the tree planting site, and they get to know each other and have experience planting trees together. Now, one of the small challenges we have is that very often when school children from outside of Armenia visit Armenia, they're not there during tree planting season. 
Um, so <laughs> yeah. uh, everybody wants to plant a tree, but maybe sometimes um, it's not the best time. However, we do always accommodate them, and we want to tell them all about the work that we're doing and uh, how they can help. That's beautiful. Uh, does that also extend out to like a like an Armenian guy that wants to take his uh, family on a little trip uh, for a weekend or something? Uh, can they get involved like that too, or does does this, this just have to be for uh, school kids and so forth? Well, if you're offering, um, Jono, then when you get to Armenia, I will make sure that the staff puts you to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew that was coming, Chris. <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. We. Um, it, it, we host visits to planting sites, to the nurseries, to the educational center, and all we ask is that before you go, that you contact us um, at our main office in Watertown, and uh, depending on the time of year and where you're going to be and how many people are in your group, we can work something out that would accommodate you. That's be- that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's great. I got another big question here. How optimistic are you on this project that – uh, you know, you're planting these trees, they're cutting the trees down, the uh, disease and so forth. How, how much of a, uh, like I played football, and I'm going to use the word here, defense. Uh, you guys are always on the defensive. Is there going to be a time when you guys are just going to kick back and watch these trees grow and not worry about anything happening with them? I mean, every, uh, nature's taking its course and uh, these trees growing and uh, Armenia not being so threatened by this we wouldn't be doing this if we weren't optimists um there's two pieces to it one is the trees and uh, can we plant enough trees to offset logging illegal or otherwise uh i don't know we'll keep trying for as long as we can the other piece is the education and as i said before we're trying to get the children to understand from a very young age how important it is to conserve Armenia's environment and its trees so that when they become the next generation of Armenia's leaders, perhaps they'll take a different approach. Isn't it amazing, uh, G. Murray, that uh, we always used to think that the older people, the older generations were the ones that took care of things and we'd have to have them teach the young. Now it's from what you're saying, it's almost the opposite to where we're, we're trying to just get the young on course now and, you know, uh, just just get them in the right track so the future will be safe for our, the Armenian uh, forestry. You know, the world has changed so much and so quickly, and in Armenia, that's especially true. When you think of all that's happened there over the past 25 years, and they've done amazingly well. There were many challenges, but... Um, they're working so hard on so many issues to overcome them. We're happy to be able to help. Well, that's beautiful. Uh, now, how does one get involved with your organization? Let, let's just say uh, I'm sure there's people out there listening saying, you know what, I, I would like to be a part of that. I, 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 think, I think that I, I can plant these trees. Or, or people like me and Chris who just want to kick back and maybe write a tr- check to you folks. Uh, can you give us both aspects of this? Sure. Um, You can visit us on our Facebook page or our website, which is armeniatree.org. You can contact us at our office in Watertown, Massachusetts, which is 65 Main Street in Watertown, Massachusetts. We have a new initiative, uh, which is just about to launch in a couple of weeks, and there will be a lot of um, information on the web and social media about it. It's called the Living Century Initiative. Uh, So now we've celebrated or commemorated 100 years since the genocide. What happens in the next century? What Armenia Tree Project is doing um, is creating some planting sites in honor of the lost Armenian communities of Western Armenia. So, for example, if your grandparents came from Harpert, Mm -hmm. there is no Harpert anymore, which has an Armenian community, but... We have established a site, which will be the Harpert Memorial Forest in present-day Armenia, and you can plant trees in memory of your family in that location. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah, it's great. We're very excited about it. Like I said, it's going to launch soon. Within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be 
uh, starting the website, and we're going to have some information about it on social media, and then there'll be a mailing which follows in a couple of weeks. But stay tuned for that because it is very exciting. Well, you got to you got to keep us informed on that. It, it, I tell you what, this is just great stuff that we're hearing here because you know. I'll be honest with you. I did not. I did not know all this was going on. I. I didn't know we were losing the forestry because every postcard you see, you see the green trees everywhere and so forth. And once I re- went to your site and I read that ab- about what could happen in the future and what it's so close, fifty years. Uh, I said, my God, we got to do something about this. And I said, Let, let's uh, let's do the show. It's uh, it it'd be perfect. It, uh, so I'm I'm so glad to have you on our show here. Thank you very much. And we we've tried to make it easy for people to help. Um, you know, for twenty dollars, we'll plant a tree in Armenia and send you a nice certificate. Um, Deputy Director Jason Sohegian reminded me today that Father's Day is coming up, and if you want to plant some trees and. In honor of your dad, we'll send him a nice certificate letting him know that trees have been planted uh, in Armenia in, in honor of him on Father's Day. Uh, so uh, check that us out is on beautiful. Facebook. We're all about it. That is very beautiful. And you know what? Uh, I lost my dad uh, in early 2000. How, how great would that be for people like me that remembers uh, their family still and uh, would like to uh, plant a tree in remembrance of their family. That's excellent stuff there. Well, I tell you what, thank you very much, uh, Jean-Marie Papelian. It's been great having you on our show. And uh, I tell you what, Chris, let's get all their information yeah. and let's put this on our site and uh, let's let's get the word out as much as we can. And we appreciate all your hard work. Yeah. This is this is really great stuff that we're hearing here. Yeah, and anyone who wants to hear more, all of the information for the website, their social media accounts, all of that will be on our Facebook page. It'll be in the description of the show under the episode, so you'll you'll easily be able to find it. Armenia well, Tree Project. Time. Yeah. Time. Yeah, that was just uh, giving the name out again. So, G. Marie, it was uh, great having you on our show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All righty. What a great show that was, Chris. What a great guest we had. I did not know all that stuff. No, and that is, you know, it's just so interesting, the story about how, you know, all the areas that they're adding, you know, the the trees and the issues with, you know, I mean, I find it interesting that it's, you know, it's such an issue that they aren't staying, you know what I mean, that you have people out there hacking them down and, and, and the and the thing that gets me is why doesn't most of the countries around the world take notice of their countries being uh, i mean we're using so much of natural resources yeah why can't we give it back to nature too yeah well and i wish m- more countries would do what armenia is doing right there i i tell you i was very fortunate enough to run across these folks uh, again, guess who saved my butt on this one? Uh, <laughs> he called me up and he said, you know what, John? This group right here would be great, and that was Roger Capellian. Oh, what and, a great guy, great he's guest. He's a great guy and a great guest, and he's still got his books out there, by the way. And uh, he bought a couple of these trees in remembrance to his family and so forth, so God bless him on that. Absolutely. He introduced me to the guy that made all this happen, and that was Jason Sohigian. Jason Sohigian, he's part of this Armenian Tree Project, and he made this all possible. So it was very beautiful. Thank you very much, uh, Jean Marie, for being on our show. You were great. And uh, my friends, uh, this was another great week, a great interview, and uh, hope to come back with some more great interviews down the line. We'll see you guys next week. Kishere Party, my friends, it's been fun. Tune in next week for another episode of Genatsa Tayen, a toast to Armenia with Jano Kabinjian. You can find the show online at www.armeniaproud.com or download and subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher for Android. This is the Ignotainment Media Network.